Hey everyone, we're going to make a really simple Rubik's Cube today um, by learning about this option with the extrude called Keep Faces Together. So before we begin, let's take a look at the subdivisions. Um, we can just select all three of these numbers at once and type them in at once, right? So it's a 3 by 3 uh, by 3. Um, let's go ahead and select our faces. Or actually, before we do that, let's make sure we think about what's on the inside of the Rubik's Cube. Um, so we're going to change the color to a Lambert. And I don't remember if it's black on the edges or white. We'll just leave it this way. Call this Rubik Cube White Lambert. Now we'll select all the faces. We'll hit Extrude. And if I pull them out like this, you'll notice that it just sort of, sort of bulges. Um, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to undo before that. And if I take a look down below in the channel box, there's one option way down here called Keep Faces Together. It says On. There's two ways I can change this. I can type Off, or I can just type 0, uh, because it's a binary system. 0 is Off, 1 is On. So now it's off. If I pull it out now, you'll notice that they're not sticking together. They actually pull apart as different faces. So let's just pull it a little bit, just a tiny bit. And these still look like they're stuck. So what we're going to do is click on this um, click on this scale button, any one of the scale buttons, just to activate scale here. And we can just shrink that down just a bit. So you'll notice that now, all of these are completely separate. It actually created faces on the inside between these faces as well, which is pretty cool. So now that that's set, just get back to my normal selection tool. Select these nine faces up front. <clears throat> Apply a new blin. Make sure I can find that blin, blin six for me. And give it the right color. This one can be the blue side. All right. And I'll just scoot ahead really quickly uh, and fast forward through this so that you can see um, the process. And there we go. You can do the same thing with tile too. Select all your faces, extrude, pull it up a little bit, turn off, keep faces together, activate your scale and scale them down just a tiny bit. For all of these, we can assign our material. So now we have a little bit of that uh, grout, the stuff holding the tiles down. And if you'd like, again, I'm going to fast forward through this, you can alternate it to make a checkerboard pattern, or whatever pattern you'd like. There we go. This is also super useful for when you're modeling um, like a human hand. And we're not going to get into something like that that deep right now. Uh, but I just want to show you uh, what kind of things we can do with it. <laughs> so we can think about this as the, the, the back side of our hand or the palm. The thumb kind of comes out from the side right around here. Um, but the fingers all come out here up front. So we can select these four faces, extrude, pull them out, and if I try scaling them down, it doesn't quite work until I turn keep faces together off. So now these are all completely separate fingers. I can then extrude again, and extrude again. For a little bit of a natural finger bend. So. That is a really quick way of getting um, some really simple fingers going for a hand to begin with. But the uh, point of the lesson is, keep
keep faces together, you gotta know when to turn it on or turn it off. Alright?